Hi guys, you're welcome to Celebrity Q&A. My name is Lance Jampa, your host as always. Now this is where we have interesting exclusive interviews, basically questions and answers with your favorite celebrities to help you get to know them better. Now my guest for today is going to be introduced to you after this break. Don't move a muscle. guys so my guest for today is a highly prolific presenter artist and an OAP who's got the hottest baritone voice I've ever heard my queen the resident <laughs> president how are you <laughs> see hype see hype <laughs> you actually have a very nice voice well I, I I I thank you thank you for letting me for letting me be on your show I really appreciate the fact that I'm chosen as one of the celebrities to face the Q&As, know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, well, my name is McQueen, the resident president, as she says. I have a no. lot of AKs, actually, on my name. Are you serious? P yes. Please, I, I'm going to allow you to reintroduce yourself, so go ahead. <laughs> okay. My name is McQueen, the resident president, mm -hmm. a.k.a. the OAP of life, mm -hmm. a.k.a. the OAP's OAP, wow. a.k.a. the boss of boss, a.k.a. the boss of all bosses. <sighs> AKA the boss himself and so many other AKAs. You could just put another AKA behind all the AKAs <laughs> and de I definitely would take them. All right, you're welcome to Celebrity Q&A once again. You Thanks. look amazing, I must say. When am I having one of these, your caps now? Uh, problem is, if you have it, it will like, you took my cap. <laughs> so I'll give you, I'll, I'll do a brand for you. All right, yeah, all I'll right. do a brand for you. Just tell my, my, my associates to do a brand for you. Lanzi. I'm anticipating that. <laughs> All right. So how long have you been presenting? Well, I grew up on, I grew up presenting. Like a lot of people will say, how long you've been doing music, how long you've been doing stuff, you know. Yeah. I grew up, I grew up loving radio right from when I was a kid. Okay. And uh, I remember when I used to listen to radio a lot in Jaws. I was one time called as the most consistent Listener. Listener. You know, that, that was... That what was, frequency was that? that? 90.5, of course. Oh, that was <laughs> FM. Yeah. Shout out. So it was, it was crazy, man. I, I grew up loving radio. Mm -hmm. Then uh, coming in to do radio myself, I started doing radio. Uh, I, I am 18 years now on radio. Wow. Yeah, I'm 18 That's years huge. on radio. So it's, it's huge. I, I, I had to do the calculation right now. Not like I'm good at math or something, but mm. I did the calculation like okay. quick, quick like that. So, in 2001 to 2019 is 18 years. That's a long time. That's a very long time, actually. <laughs> All right, so how would you describe your growth in the media industry thus far? It's grace to grace. Grace to grace. Glory to glory. You know, uh, want, if you love doing something, it's easy for you to get it done. Actually. So, I find myself, I find, I find myself having fun. When I'm on radio, a lot of people. Some people see it as tasking, yeah. but I am always asking to want to do Something. more. So if I am on radio and I am doing my job, I feel like I'm just having fun. Sometimes I don't. Even, I don't even want to stay at home. I prefer to go to the studio even when I'm not on duty. Then I find myself doing something. That's some real passion, right there. Yeah, I I have worked on radio. Like I have always been the. I've, I've always had the highest number of programs on radio. The very, the very first day, in fact, I did, one funny thing is, I did not even apply for my job. Are you serious? How I strolled, I strolled to the studio, to, to the station, then, that was a long time ago, okay. you know, I was just, I, I just told them I wanted to do the job, they said, can you do it? I said, yes, I can do it. Where are you from? I said, Joss. Sure. So when they just heard that Joss, the Joss thing made them feel, okay, there's this thing about entertainment connected to J-Town, so once you're, once you're from Joss, that means you can do it. So let's let's just see him, you know. I just strolled there. Then somebody, one of the persons on duty, told me to help her play music. Okay. So I, I was now I was now touching the buttons and all that. So my own style of music, I was playing my own taste of music. You know, I came down with my I came in with my J Town feel, J -town that swag, kind of thing. You know? So I I was playing. One of the bosses came in. and said, like, "Where is she?" 
I don't want to mention her name. Where is she? Okay. Then she stepped out. So have you been the person playing like for the past hours? I said, yes, sir. I like your choice of music. That was it. So the very first day, the very first day they tried me on radio was on the Valentine's Day. Hmm. So Nervous day. you will not believe it. I did not audition. I did not do any voice or anything. I was always there. I was there for like three weeks. Then the day they said I should be on air, they now punched the microphone. I spoke for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I was there for with my boss. Mm -hmm. He told me to calm down. You know, that was it. So he he left the studio. He said he was coming back. He didn't he didn't come back. And you won't believe it. Do you know how long I was in the studio from twelve noon to twelve midnight? Wow. And wow. I was not wow. doing some magic. I was not hungry. I was excited. Oh, that was some opportunity. That was, how, that was preparedness. That, yeah, that was how I started the job. In the next, in the next week, the name mm -hmm. McQueen was McQueen like was all over. You know, you know, like wow, is this me? All right. So um, a lot of people seem to know you, but haven't been able to place a face to the name. Yeah, this is the face. <laughs> oh yeah, I know right. Well, have you been have you been to a place where um, you overheard people talking about you and then? They don't know that so. many times many times you know uh i i have been you know i did tv okay. i did tv for some for some time i did tv for some time i saw one i saw my colleague who my co-presenter when i was doing tv you know and uh but then i i i've been to places where people don't know it's me okay they're they they that they'll talk about me and i will just listen and smile it happens. how did that feel yeah, it feels it feels good. It feels good, and it makes me it makes me want to do more. Do more, you, you know. get what I'm saying? Yeah. It, I don't. I don't. The truth about it, I don't take it to my head. I try as much as possible to be disciplined in That's everything I do. You know, key. I try to be disciplined. I try to be good at what I'm doing. I, you know, they say on 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 broadcasting, mm -hmm. you're as good as your last show. So my last show, I should be better than better it. Better than it every day. Yeah. All right. So, what were some of the challenges you faced? in your career thus far yeah challenges <laughs> challenges this year like uh you know when you when when there's this there's this supposed status that you people see see seem to see you attain and meanwhile that is not really who you are it tries it makes a lot of people feel there you know yeah it makes you it makes you begin to want to live fake life you know yeah. and I, I i try as i try as much i try as much as possible not to fall into that kind of temptation you know because it's the real the real is the real the real so if you if you don't got it you don't got it if you yeah. got it you got it so there's nothing wrong in you trying to be humble and staying straight you know so it's a challenge it's a challenge because even when you want to stay real some people still see you as not real yeah. so it will be a challenge because you have issues once in a while. That, but at a, at some point, when they get to realize that it's your realness that and is that is that is okay. there, they just accept you. They don't have no choice. All right. So, what would you say is your biggest fear in life? Fear. Yes. I did fear. <laughs> Think I'm uh, not feeling. My biggest fear is feeling. My biggest fear is feeling, yeah, because I don't see, I don't want to see myself feel. Okay. So it's always very difficult for me to even want to attempt to feel. So it's my mm. biggest so fear. So it keeps you going. It I definitely guess. has to keep me going. All right. So there's this undue pressure society places on young people these days. Yeah. About having to get married at a certain age. Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on that? It's 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 one of the biggest challenges people face. <laughs> And I don't know why you're bringing that up, but then <laughs> it naturally happens. It's it's crazy. It's really really crazy, but just continue staying real. Yeah, but then um, you had a chance to talk to uh, um, people out there that always put pressure on people, like, like family, to get like married, parents. like family, you know, parents, yeah, friends, tell, and I'll, all of that. What would you tell them? I'll tell I'll tell them I'll tell them like this, guys. Just let them be. Yeah, I'm looking at them. I'll tell them like this, guys. Just let them be. You know, the guy or the girl in question loves to get married, wants to get married as much as you think she should get. But the truth about it is, would you want to see her regret taking a decision? 
the decision you forced her to do it or the decision you forced him to take? Ask yourself these questions. The most important thing is you want to see this person happy. Yes. Is he happy now? Good. What is your plan? Pray for the person and let things happen. And things will happen. There's no, there's no way things will not happen. Okay. It definitely will happen. Of course, that is right. Are you still talking about that? What is your ideal woman? My ideal woman is a woman that, that understands me. Okay. Yes, I, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a crazy kind of person. I could be so childish. <laughs> I could be, I could be, I could be so childish, and at, at the same time, I could be so matured because I, mm. I am, I am flexible like that. I can okay. be, I can be in, a, I can, you can see me on in a corporate world when I'm pre doing presentations, you no, know, like corporate presentation, and you can mm. see me on the entertainment platform mm. doing my thing, mm -hmm. and I'm just doing my two fingers in there, mm -hmm. you know that kind mm -hmm. of thing. I am just flexible like that. So right. I want to, I want somebody who believes in me and understands me in my mood. When I'm in my corporate mode, when I activate my corporate mode, you definitely got to swing with me like that. Yeah. And when I activate my social mode, you yeah, definitely should yeah. swing like, with me like that. All right, all right. So what is your philosophy of life? Philosophy? Do I have a philosophy? Just live life right. Live life right and be happy. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing about life. You should be happy. Are you happy where you are right now? Mm -hmm. Are you happy? where you are right now. I love what I'm doing. Oh. And I love where I am. All right, talking about where you are, if you had to describe your life using a color, what color would you color. be and why? First of all, I don't have a favorite color. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't have. Wow. I just, any color that is good with me is good. That's just the thing. So I am rainbow, man. I'm a mixture of colors. All right, so if you describe your life with yeah. a color, it'll be rainbow, everything. Rainbow. All colors go, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm all colors. You know, I'm bright. I don't let myself go. I don't, I don't, I don't let anything weigh me down. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm as beautiful as the rainbow. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. All right, so um, what would you say is the basic requirements of being an OAP? First of all, uh, the basic requirement is passion. Yeah. Having the love. You know, I I started I started I didn't I didn't start presenting as a professional. I started as a rookie. I grew okay. up in it. So okay. I I I and I it was it was in my stardom days I went to school. I was already I was already a celebrity when I went to school to wow. study mass communication. Mm -hmm. So when I when I was in school everybody already knew who you queen were. And how was it for you? It was Combining cool. Combining fame and education it and was, people around. That's, that's the reason why I said you need, what you need to do is to stay calm. You know, don't let it get to your head. Mm -hmm. You know, my HOD in school was my fan. My lecturer, some of the lecturers were my fans. Mm -hmm. Some of my course mates were my fans. So you, you, you face some challenges like that. There are people that will just beef you for no reason. You know, this guy feels he's a celebrity and all that. Like after some years, some of my classmates, I meet them and they tell me that that man used to hate me. I was like, why would why would you hate me? <laughs> then yeah, they used to hate me, but they did they didn't know why they were hating on me. You get? And we they they come out to tell me because they discovered that I am just me mm -hmm, and I am mm -hmm. just simple like that. You know. Mm -hmm. So fame is good. I uh, you know fame is good because. I, at some point, I, I, I was not buying cars. All right, so what is the most inspiring thing someone has ever said to you? You know, when, when somebody tells you something nice about you, is it, it ins inspires you, especially when somebody who is a veteran in the field, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, somebody you've always been looking up to, the person comes to tell you that, man, I love what you're doing. It makes me, you know, but some people take it to their heads. That's the reason why I try, I, I tell, I keep saying, don't take it to your head. So if a veteran will tell you that you're doing good, that means it is a bigger challenge for you. So in, it, it will inspire you to want to do yeah. good so that you will also get to that point where you see somebody behind and tell the person, man, you're doing good. It inspires me a lot when somebody believes in me mm -hmm. or somebody who sees me from the bottom and still sees that, I have prospects. Mm -hmm. It makes me. It makes me. It makes me stronger. All 
All right, all right, guys. So we have been I've been right here actually on way from our queen, the resident president. I'm going on a short break right now, and I'll be back in no time. Whenever I surf the internet, I see lots of trending issues that affect our social lives. And then I wonder if these issues are really true or just a mess cam. From WhatsApp to Facebook to Instagram, Twitter, um, to go and a lot of them. On iTrends, I bring to you young people to share opinions on these internet related issues. As we all know love is a beautiful thing that everyone wants to experience. But lately, love is a So keep a date with us on Viewer TV for fresh episodes of iTrends every week. Hey guys, still on the show, Celebrity Q&A, and of course with me is your number one OAP. Am I, am, I, am I really the number resident one? President. Of course you are, for <laughs> I us am, on this show. Yeah, yes. I, am, I am an OAP. I, 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 like, I like keeping it humble, man. <laughs> In as much as you like keeping it humble, we like lifting the humble. Well, yeah, that's, that's, I appreciate the fact that you lift <laughs> me up, but I am up there humble, man. <laughs> All right, keep chilling up there, okay? Never come down. So I wouldn't. Guys. I would I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to come down. I still want. That's the reason why it's success, man. It's 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 hard to to be successful, and it's harder to remain to remain or stay successful. successful. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So we are now onto the game segment of this show, and today my game for today is titled "What Will My Queen Do?" I hate games, man. Are you serious? Well, yeah. don't play one today. Well, let me try. I just <laughs> hope I don't suck in it. Please don't suck. This is what will McQueen do? So I'm what gonna play you do? some scenarios. Okay. Then you get to tell us what you will do right. if you find yourself in that show. All right. All right. So are you ready? I am. Let me take the first one. So you're driving to work one morning, yeah. and out of nowhere, a car runs into you by the side. Okay. And then, without saying a word, the driver zooms off. Mm -hmm. Nobody was hurt though, but mm -hmm. the car, your car was badly damaged. Mm -hmm. Now you give him a chase, and then when you caught up with him. You discovered his wife was in labor mm. and you're actually rushing to the hospital. Mm. So would you ask him to fix your car or would you just walk away? You know, one funny thing is this scenario happened with me. Really? Yeah, it happened with me one time. I was going to work. Somebody hit me. Mm -hmm. Somebody hit me, like brushed off my mirror, my side mirror. I didn't give him the chest because I needed to get to work. You know, early morning mm, programs, and, yeah. you, and, you, and you're, you're on radio, you need to be on radio by 6 a.m. I needed, no, 5.30, 5.30, I needed to be on show, on, on radio by 5.30. So why would I chase him? I was, I was he, th he actually thought I was chasing, I was giving him a chase, but I was actually chasing myself to the studio. So I left him. But then, with this kind of scenario, mm -hmm. if I should give him the chase and discovered that she, uh, I caught up with him and his wife, it's on labor, I am a human being. I'm born of a woman. Mm. You know, I have. I even have a song. My mommy is my homie. Ah. You know that kind of thing. So, I, I will, I will assist. You actually assist, yeah, not I just walk assist. away. I will assist. Ah. But if, if not for, if not for the fact that I'm going to work, uh -huh. I would want to stay there till the end. But okay. the little assistance I will give, I will. Then I will go. All right, all right. So, um, assuming the second scenario is, assuming you're called upon to anchor an event. Mm. Then you pulled up feeling yourself and oh, my queen, the resident president is here, you know. And then as soon as you got to the stage, mm. introduce yourself after a wonderful intro, mm. say your name and all of that. Then the crowd starts to boo you. Like, get off stage. Don't want to get off, man. What would you do? <laughs> uh, those, are some, those are some of the dynamics of OAP. When they say on-air personality, mm -hmm. uh, microphone, controller. MC, you get what I'm saying? It's your duty mm -hmm. to bring those people back to you. I have I have been in that scenario, okay. but at the end of the day, I was share I was I was giving up my my complimentary cards and taking pictures, you know. So when when the first, 
the impression, the first impression should not bring you down. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. all, you need to, all you need to do is to calm the crowd because they've not even heard you say anything. Yeah. You understand okay. what I'm saying? So okay. start the show. Start your show. In the middle of your show, everybody will get to feel you and they will begin to regret why they did that in the first place. Yeah. It happened to me too. So what, I, what I'm actually looking at is like, you, you're looking at scenarios that have, that, that have played out with me. Yeah, actually, <laughs> you know? I'm in the spirit, you know? I, I, I found myself, I, I have been on shows where mm. celebrities arrive, they make noise, then they now call me in the in-between. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So mm. they give me the microphone. I was the person in charge. I was the microphone, the, I was the MC. So I started. Everybody was quiet. Everybody was not really feeling what was, was supposedly not feeling me. Yeah. But when we started the game or the show, everybody the game felt changed. Me. Everything changed and I was ruling it. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's, I cannot, I cannot, if I, if I, if I am emceeing in a wedding, the wedding, the wedding turns to a show. It turns to a show. The That's what I'm here. So I did try. I did try for that side. <laughs> All right. So the last one. Mm -hmm. As you mean, you're married, but your mom and your wife don't get along at all. Then your mom comes to visit for a month, mm -hmm. and you went to work this fateful day. Mm -hmm. And then when you get back, you you found out that your mom and your wife got into like an argument or something. Mm -hmm. Your mom slaps your wife, and your wife retaliated. Mm -hmm. What would you do? <laughs> First of all, you know what happen. It will not happen because <laughs> let's say it happens. Yes, what I, what I, I know, I will say it now. Mm -hmm. First of all, it will not happen because my mom will not be that immature. That's fun. Number two, I don't think I'm going to get married to an uncultured woman <laughs> that will get to the point of wanting to get into an altercation with my mom mm -hmm. without you. That's the reason why I said my ideal woman is somebody who understands me. So if there's any problem, definitely she will want to relate with me and mm -hmm. all that. But if it happens, if it happens, when I come home, when I come home, I will not be happy with both of them. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll not be happy with both of them. Okay. I will not be happy with both of them at that point. Then I'll tell my wife to go to the room. I'll tell my mom to go to the room. Okay. Then I meet my mom separately, talk to my mom on a mother-son level. level. Then I will beg her, I'll, be, I'll apologize to her on my wife's behalf. Yeah. Then I will go back and meet my wife and ask her why, she, why, why that played out. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So after asking all these questions, I'll tell my wife to go and apologize. Yeah, because she's, she's my mom. She's as old as her mom, so whatever it is she has done that warranted that slap should not have allowed her to retaliate. She should have played the matured girl. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And at the end of the day, she could just come report to me and tell me that this is what happened. Then I'll deal with it. So I'll tell her to go and apologize. All right. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank I you try. so much. I know try for the game. You try. You <laughs> slid all. You slid all. all Thank right. you so much for coming. I, I hope to, to have you back soon. Again? Yes, now. Well, I don't mind coming around. <laughs> but right, I hope guys. it's not going to be on Q and A. <laughs> no, it's because not. Because you, you ask, you've asked all a, the questions. Yeah, it's going to be on something else, something on a, different. On a whole something different big, level. You know? On a whole different level. All right, no problem. I'll be all right, guys. So it's a wrap on Celebrity Q and A for today. Until I see you next week, same time, same station. I remain Lanzi Jampak. Have a nice day.